So this is John and Virginia Sweeney who live in Applewood Point in Roseville. And today they're going to share some of their thoughts about the community of Roseville and the city of Roseville and, and what they're up to. So thank you for joining us, John and Virginia. <laughs> um, John, I'm going to point this question to you first. Um, being a Roseville resident, what, what has it meant to you to hear that the city of Roseville actually has designated a page on their city website for Alzheimer's and dementia? That's very important because one of my greatest concerns now is dementia awareness. Didn't used to bother me before it visited our house, but uh, anything that the city can do in an initiative that will uh, make the business community and the community in general uh, aware of this tsunami, as I would term it, of dementia that's facing Minnesotans. John and Virginia, you two also partake in the Arthur's Memory Cafe at J. Arthur's Coffee Shop um, twice a month. And can you tell people a little bit about what that group has meant to you? You speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, one of the most important things, I think, and, and, and Virginia has said this in, in her own uh, words, that it's encouraging and it's uplifting to uh, have this bond and friendship with people that are facing the very same issues we are. And as Virginia always said, when someone asked her what it meant to her, she'd say, well, I find I'm not the only one that with the, <laughs> with the illness. Uh, the other thing is some of the uh, the resource information that we've gained from what other people are doing that has helped us and maybe we've even contributed to help other people but it is a phenomenal forum uh, for just uh, camaraderie and and actually helping one another and it's a comfortable forum anything you want to add Virginia I just let him do the talk he's a good speaker well, we recently had an incident uh, for the last couple of years. I have been the the chef and the, <laughs> of the family, and uh, it is generally known in the community that we live with. And, and uh, recently, I thought a very insensitive remark because Virginia remembers that she was the, the cook, and we had a lovely luncheon, and she said, I, uh, I won't have to fix him any dinner tonight. And a very insensitive person said, well, you don't fix the dinner, and that hurt. Uh, and it, it hurt her and it hurt me. Because I still help out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Make meals and do the dishes and all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it, it is those little things that can be so stabbing. Um, and they can be so innocent, people don't even realize that they're... They don't realize what they're doing. And, and that's a case of, uh, of just the lack of awareness. And while it, it, I use the term tsunami, but there's nearly 100,000 diagnosed cases of dementia in Minnesota, and probably tens of thousands undiagnosed it is a major issue that we're dealing with, and I think anything and everything that can be done to raise awareness in the community that, number one, it isn't contagious, you don't have to be afraid to shake hands with someone <laughs> with dementia. And secondly, uh, they are people, people with dementia, and, and they should be treated with dignity and respect. And people accidentally do insensitive things, just lack of knowledge. There's two, two things. One is the, the tracking and locating of a loved one that might be confused or lost. The other one, if something happened at an emergency, and both Virginia and I wear these devices that uh, have complete medical history and, and, and the uh, emergency technicians know that all they have to do is plug that into their laptop and they'll have contacts uh, uh, medication, allergies, anything that's critical to give the care. 
I wear it because I'm the principal caregiver. If something happens to me, the first thing the, uh, that would show up on, on the uh, uh, AMT's computer would be that I'm the primary caregiver and here's a whole list of phone numbers of contacts that need to be contacted immediately. And I never take this off. I think it's very important because we bought a device uh, that I call the, uh, instead of the GPS, it's VHS for Virginia Locator, <laughs> and uh, for her to carry, and I can track with a, with with my iPhone uh, if that ever happened in need. The only problem with it, it's kind of bulky and awkward to carry. I, I think technology will change to where ideally a GPS system would be a form of jewelry that would be attractive to wear and it would provide that protection. We have not had occasion to use it, but I know some of our friends from the Memory Cafe have resources uh, that will come and spend some time with their loved one. Uh, and some of these are volunteered. Um, one of them has, it is provided as a service of the VA but that's only good if the um, if the loved one is a veteran or a veteran in the family. Volunteers where the caregiver could get away and know that uh, his or her loved one is is safe uh, if you have to go to a, uh, a doctor's appointment or something like that. That would be a great resource, and that's where I think the public, with more education it might be surprising how many volunteers could come to the front. I couldn't think of anything more important because uh, it, the likelihood of an emergency increases uh, as the dementia progresses. So I, I, I just can't think of anything much more important. What is the impact of being a neighbor to Roseville that the city has had on you? Well, because we live close to the city of Roseville, we've, we've been introduced to the Memory Cafe here, which is in the city of Roseville. And uh, we love the Memory Cafe, and we've learned a lot about what the city of Roseville is doing. Uh, I'm very impressed uh, how they've started their website uh, to help people find more information. We will definitely be looking that up. Yes. <laughs> I'm George Seiler. Uh, I'm taking care of my wife, Annie, who's in later stages of Alzheimer's. And I also have a son with a brain injury from an accident. I would be interested in partaking in anything that helped me in this resocialization process about having a spouse with this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it comforting for me to go to those kind of things. And it also helps me appreciate what I'm going through because nobody else really does. So, yeah, I think it would be, I, I would be definitely interested in pursuing some of those activities. What, what are your thoughts on restrooms? Because I'm hearing more and more comments on it would be nice to have family restrooms when we're out mm -hmm. um, because the, the person with dementia can't always maneuver on their own. Yeah. Well, for me, I absolutely have to have them. I got tra trapped once in Macy's and Annie really had to go to the bathroom. And so I brought her in the ladies' room, and, and uh, you know, fortunately she was able to find the stool, which she can't do anymore. But then she wanted to get out and couldn't get out. And uh, <laughs> I had to go out and ask one of the clerks out there if they would help me. And they did. They went right in there and helped Annie get cleaned up. And you know, what you do need, I need a restroom where Annie and I can go in together and close the door. Well, and that's so, I mean, when it gets down to the whole dignity piece, I mean, that's just huge, <laughs> just huge. And the stress of being outside that door, not knowing what's going on. I remember even doing that with my mom, even though I was in the women's bathroom. She wanted to be in there by herself, and it's stressful. Or if mm -hmm. it was just a single one being out in the hall, not knowing mm -hmm. how she was doing or could she get out the door. Um, or is she locked in now and, you know, oh, yeah. all of those types of things.